Hey guys, it's Sarah. Um, today for class we are going to be talking about Henry Meese and abstract expressionism. So I figured let's jump right in. Um, hopefully some images will be appearing to my right, probably your left. Um, we'll see if we get them in there. But today we're going to talk about Henry Nice. The piece that has inspired today's class is called Table and Rug. And as you can see, when you look at this piece, it's kind of wonky. There's something that tricks the eye. There's something that's a little off about it that to me makes it such a charming piece. And I love bringing this um, into tours with school groups, especially because I think it's so accessible and the colors are bright and it's just so um, relatable for everyone. So um, let's talk a little bit about Henry Nice. He was born in New Jersey in 1924. And then he went on to study at the Cooper Union at Columbia University and then also in Paris. So while he was in Paris, he spent time in Picasso's ceramic studio, which is actually very impressive. And then he won two big awards. So I'm going to read them off the screen just so I don't get them wrong. But um, he was awarded the Pulitzer Traveling Scholarship in Art in 1954 and the W.A. Clark Prize in 1955. So after this, after he won these awards, he came back to America and taught at many um, universities and institutions. So he taught at the British Museum, the University of Maryland, and Yale. And then he decided to live in a farmhouse in Maryland where he continued to paint until his death in 2016. So Henry Nice, something that's very interesting about him that not a lot of people know is that he actually does have Native American heritage. So he has some Cherokee ancestry that he's very connected to. And while he was alive, he was very involved with the Native community in and around um, Maryland. So kind of in the that center of the East Coast there. Um, he was involved with a lot of charity work and a lot of benefits. And he also participated in a lot of cultural ceremonies. So he was very tuned in to the Native community um, in his town and I think that's really interesting to think about how that may have influenced his work. All right so we've talked a little about Nice. Um, now let's talk about this big art movement that he was a part of. So abstract expressionism is a little intimidating right like what does that mean? It's a big word but if you break it down we're gonna make it really simple. So abstract expressionism abstract means out there right it means non objective not an object you're not painting what you see and then expressionism you're expressing a feeling or a mood so the way I like to think of it the easiest way for me to understand this art movement is artists expressing themselves and expressing feelings rather than painting what they see or painting based on a commission for someone else they're painting based on emotion so why is this important? It's important because abstract expressionism began in the 1940s, specifically in New York City. So before the 1940s, Paris, France, was really the hub of the art world. It was just the center of the universe for art for hundreds of years. If you wanted to be an artist, you studied in Paris and you showed in Paris at the Academy. Well, after World War II, the world was very changed. So Paris and many other big European cities were in absolute disrepair. Um, World War II was a really um, horrible war that disrupted not only the lives of people, but also the mentalities of people for years and years to come. So a lot of people say that abstract expressionism is really, um, it's a way that these artists expressed going through something so traumatic and so emotional. So in the 1940s, after World War II, these artists in New York City, they were dealing with the trauma of their lives. Being only in their 20s and 30s, they had already lived through the Great Depression of the 1920s and 30s, and then this very traumatic World War. And their parents had been kind of you know, scarred as well from World War I. So the world was trying to recover from these big traumatic events, and artists found new ways to express themselves with painting and with art. Um, 
So one more thing on abstract expressionism, we'll just talk about why New York City, why is that the big place? Well, during World War II, many artists escaped um, the Nazi regime and they escaped Europe and they came right into the port of New York. So they came through New York City and that's where they settled and began to make art. So some of the big name um, abstract expressionists who fled and made it to New York City are Marcel Duchamp, Marc Chagall, Fernand Liget and Mondrian. So these are some of the biggest names in art. Um, there are some artists who stayed and stayed in France and did survive, which is, is wonderful. And those big artists are typically thought of as Picasso and Matisse. So abstract expressionism, there's mainly two big camps of this type. So there's color field painting and then there's action painting. And both of these are very emotive or very expressive. It expresses how you feel. So action painting, is like Jackson Pollock, right? So splatter, it's the art of creation. It's the movement of your body when you're creating the art. That's what I think of. And then color field painting um, is really visual abstraction. So taking the most fuzzy, abstracted vision of the world around you and putting it on the page, which to them was color fields. So large blocks of colors put in a particular pattern or way. Um, I know Helen Frankenthaler is one of the, the most famous color field painters, if you want to look into that. So big names in abstract expressionism of the 1940s and 50s, Jackson Pollock, Mark Rothko, Willem de Kooning, Franz Klein, and again, Helen uh, Frankenthaler. These are the big names. You can always see them at MoMA, which is beautiful. And I'm, I'm glad that we have the Maslow exhibit right now at the Everhart Museum, so you could see them there as well. Um, but anyway, let's go back to table and rug. It's a beautiful representation of simply a home. And Henry Nice painted a lot of interiors and exteriors. He was um, motivated by the everyday of the ordinary things that were around him. And he painted this painting in 1957 in oil. I love this painting. But I think something that is really interesting that some abstract expressionists did, and especially Nice did, was play around with proportion. In abstract expressionism, something that is really interesting and that a lot of artists play with is proportion and perspective. So if you look at Henry Nice's table and rug, you can see that the table looks a little off. It's almost like you can't quite put your finger on it, but something isn't right. Maybe the legs don't match up. Maybe it seems like if this was in real life, the table would fall right over and the pots and pans would slide off because it's kind of at this weird angle. So Nice loved to play around with proportion and he loved to kind of trick the eye or to make you look for a longer period of time at his work. And that's something that I love. I think there's something very innocent about it, peaceful, youthful, um, and new. I think it's really cool. So um, I wanted to ask you guys, what do you see when you look at table and rug? Can you think of a story? Can you think of what's happening in this piece? To me, I always say that it makes me think of my grandmother's house because of those whitewashed floors. But what do you see? I'd love to know. Let me know.